What's up guys, Jay here, and welcome to the next video in the series where we go over the basic principles of the various mission types in Deep Rock Galactic. In today's video, we're going to go over the details and intricacies of the on-site refining mission type. We're going to cover the basics of what the process of completing an on-site refining mission is like, the finer details and hidden intricacies that come with it, and some recommendations and guidelines on how to play each class in this particular mission. Lastly, we'll talk about the overall difficulty of the on-site refining mission and how it compares to the other types in the game. I'm sorry if I sound a little nasally right now because I'm recovering from being a little sick, but if you guys are ready, let's dive into the mission type where you connect, build, and surf your way to victory, the on-site refining. By the way, if you want to see more gaming videos, subscribe to the channel, that way it's easier to find my content. The mission is ready, the pod is prepped, get on board the drop pod. So you're going through an on-site refining mission in Deep Rock Galactic. Well, these missions are, in my opinion, a good mix between complex and fun. They take a good amount of setup, but the overall process of going through them can be a lot of fun. The basic goal of an on-site refining mission is to collect the required amount of a material known as liquid morkite, which is the same material that you collect in mining expeditions, just in liquid form somehow. Anyway, you collect the liquid morkite by finding the geysers that are located around the map and calling in a pump jack on top of them. You then connect each of these pumps via a pipeline to the central refinery platform where the liquid morkite is pumped to. Once all the pumps are connected and constructed, you can then begin the pumping sequence, during which you'll have to deal with swarms of enemies as well as occasional malfunctions in the pipelines that need to be repaired. Once all the morkite is collected and sent back to the station, the drop pod will shortly arrive and then all you have to do is make your way to it so it can bring the team home. The basic process of completing an on-site refining mission can be broken down into four steps. Find the veins and call in the pump jacks, connect them to the central platforms, defend them while they collect the Morkite, and then send the Minehead back for extraction. Minehead launched. Escape pod will arrive when Minehead has been secured. Like I said before, on-site refining missions, in my opinion, offer a good mix of complexity and fun. It's a very involved mission type similar to escort and sabotage missions, but not quite as much. Still, it doesn't hurt to know the kinds of details and finer points that come with this mission type. Now, unlike most mission types, these missions aren't too much affected by cave length or complexity. The number of overall objectives doesn't change, as you will always have to connect three pumps to the station. However, those parameters can affect how they are positioned in the cave system, which can sometimes lead to very inconvenient placements. Speaking of which, the next thing to keep in mind is the kind of layout that the cave system has on these missions. On-site refining missions are set in smaller, non-linear caves that are generally spherical, with a few small offshoot caves which eventually wrap back around to the main cave. Did you catch all that? The refinery will land either in the center or on the edge of the map, while the liquid morkite geysers will spawn in randomized locations. Simply put, there's a good chance that at least one of the morkite geysers will be in an annoying spot, so just be prepared for that. Once you have all that knowledge, the first thing you need to actually do is find the morkite geysers themselves. The veins can be found by the sound of spurting liquid, the blue flames exhausted, and the dark blue spots along the walls. The well itself is a dark blue color and spurts out a murky, dark turquoise liquid. Once you find one of the wells, you'll have to call in a pump jack on top of it. Once the pump jack is called in, you'll then be able to see the pump when you bring up your laser pointer, allowing you to have a reference to where the pump jacks are at all times. From there, you will need to construct a pipeline to connect the refinery to the individual pump jacks. You need to start the pipelines at the refinery, and they are connected by placing nodes down one at a time, which automatically form pipeline frames between themselves when placed. In order to place a node, press the button on the pipeline's starting point or an existing node to bring up a hologram of where the node can be placed. The hologram will shine blue when a node is ready to be placed, and red if there is something stopping it. When placing the nodes down, they have to follow several rules in order to be connected. First, they need to be placed on solid ground. However, they will support themselves if the terrain they stand on is broken. Also, they must be within a certain distance from one another, cannot be placed at too high of an angle, and cannot be blocked by any kind of terrain. However, when you place them, they will automatically clear some space around them. Note that pipelines can intersect each other. Nodes can also be removed by striking them twice with a pickaxe, which will delete the node and wind the pipeline back to the previous node. Once the series of nodes connects to the pump jack, the pipeline's position is considered permanent and cannot be changed. The next step is to finish constructing the pipeline by putting the actual pipe over the frame of the nodes. This is done by holding the interact button over each pipeline node which builds the pipeline over the frame and connects it to the next one. This process is repeated until the pipeline is fully constructed up to the pump jack itself. Now I haven't told you the most fun part about this process yet, and that's that you can actually ride the pipes after you construct them. Pressing the interact button on the side of the pipes will let you ride on a kind of space skateboard that's attached to the pipe. While riding, you will automatically move along the pipe trail at a set speed and can look around and fire your weapons freely. It's a super fun way to get around and can help you get both to and from the pump jacks very easily. 
Once all three pipelines are constructed, it's time to get pumping. Press the button on the control panel to start the sequence and get ready for a big fight. The noise produced by the refinery will attract creatures which will trigger multiple swarms to attack the players until the end of the entire mission. The process of how much Morka you've collected is measured by a percentage on the top right corner of the screen. Occasionally, some of the nodes on the pipelines will be damaged and cause the process to come to a halt. When this happens, you need to find the broken nodes and repair them to continue the operation. Despite being called leaks, they will not actually cause any loss of progress when this happens, so you can take as much time as you need to repair them. You can find out which pipelines are leaking by the red glow and that it has liquid spurting out. There's also a beeping noise that happens, but usually there's so much going on that it can be hard to hear sometimes. To repair a pipeline, just clear the bugs around it and hold the interact button to fix the leaks. One thing to keep in mind is that the frequency of the damage and how many nodes are affected depends on how many players are in the session and, to a lesser degree, the hazard level. With just one or two players, only two pipelines will leak and there will only be a few leaking nodes. With a full team, all three pipelines will usually leak and they will have several broken nodes. The hazard level primarily influences how often the pipes break. Playing on a lower level will usually only result in two leakages, while higher levels will often cause three to happen. Also, importantly, it should be noted that the leaks are inevitable and are preset to happen at specific points. The amount of enemies killed does not affect when or where leakages happen. After defending the platform for what feels like an eternity sometimes, the mining process will eventually complete and you can hit the control panel again to launch the refinery's cargo rocket and call in the drop pod to get you out. Now, I'm not sure if it's just me, but I feel like every time I do these missions, the pod always drops right next to one of the pump jacks, so you can easily just ride the pipeline to get to the drop pod. In any event, however you can, just get to it and get out. Oh, and one last weird thing about these missions is that for some reason, loot bugs really like to crowd around the refining platform, and I don't know why. Seriously, there are times where there's like 20 of them in one spot. It's not anything that'll affect gameplay, really, it's just fun to see them all grouped up like that. Drop pod has arrived. Plug is ticking. All up to you, team. Well, that was a surprisingly long detail section. Like I said, these missions can be a little complex, but they offer a lot in terms of engaging gameplay. That said, it's time to shift our focus and talk about the classes and how they can help make these missions as smooth as possible, as well as if they do anything special for these missions. Right off the bat, I gotta say that the Driller is absolutely the MVP for these missions. His whole kit is perfectly curated for this mission, and he can single-handedly make it a breeze to complete. But with that said, let's go over each of the classes and see how they can assist us in these mission types. As I just said, the Driller is by far the most valuable asset to these missions. I briefly mentioned this in my original guide for the Driller, but on-site refining missions really let the Driller shine more than any other mission. Firstly, his drills make connecting the pipelines trivial. Like I said, sometimes the Morkite veins are in just super inconvenient places, with a lot standing between it and the refinery. Well, the Driller can just cut a straight line, or as straight as he can, from wherever the geyser is directly back to the refining platform, letting you bypass all the annoying looping and doubling back that you would have to do without him. In terms of what weapons, you can really use whatever you want since your main contribution will be your drills, but the cryo cannon and wave cooker are good because they let you deal with those annoying flying enemies or enemies that are super far away. The gunner can help his teammates get around the map quickly and help defend effectively. A good thing the gunner can do is to set up zip lines going from one pump jack to the others. Combine these with the pipeline surfing and you can essentially set up a travel network where anyone can get anywhere super easily. Not to mention the gunner can obviously do well at taking out the enemy swarms during the refining process thanks to his raw firepower. The thunderhead and heavy revolver can do good work at disrupting enemies and the lead bursters can be just what you need to get the bugs off of the leaking nodes. The scout has some interesting interactions during this mission. First, thanks to his handy dandy grappling hook, he can quickly get to whatever broken pipeline he needs to repair, as well as easily get back to the central platform. Also, since these missions take place in a central area, he can easily use his flares to light up the immediate area so his allies can see what's happening. The M1000 is actually not a bad choice for weapons here, especially if you have good line of sight on each of the pump locations. If you want to get fancy, you could have your engineer use his platform gun to make a little sniper's perch for you so you can pick off the bugs from a distance. Finally, the Engineer can provide many different forms of utility to these missions. First, being the Master of Defense, he can easily set up his turrets and defensive equipment at the central refinery to help keep the bugs in check. Also, similar to the Driller, he can actually help make efficient pathways for the pipelines with the use of his platform gun. He can use them to make steps if you need the pipelines to go in a specific way. For weapons, the Smart Rifle is a nice pick because it covers a wide angle, and the Grenade Launcher is good for breaking up those big groups of enemies. Now that we've covered each of the classes individually, let's sum up what we've gathered. The Driller and Engineer should prioritize on creating the most efficient pathways to lay down the pipelines, with the Driller cutting through the terrain and the Engineer filling in whatever terrain is needed. 
Meanwhile, the scout and gunner can work together to set up a network of transport and mobility in order to get around the area quickly and effectively, with the scout being the first responder for leaking pipe nodes and the gunner clearing out the enemies in order to get the rest. Remember as always that these roles are not set in stone and if the situation calls for it, you can always adapt. The mule has docked, initiating launch sequence. Now that we've covered the basics of the on-site refining mission and talked about how the classes function in it, let's talk about where this mission stands when compared to the other mission types. Remember that each mission type gets three different ratings, one for difficulty, one for how fun it is, and one for its complexity, each with a value of one to five, with one being low and five being high. Remember again that these ratings are only my personal take on this, so if you think it should be higher or lower, that's perfectly fine. First, in terms of difficulty, I'm going to give it a three. This mission type isn't so much difficult as as much as it is just a pain to set up. The hardest part about these missions is usually finding the Morkite Banes and finding the proper way to set the pipelines up, which takes the most time usually. Once you do, however, then the mission more or less just plays itself and all you have to do is fight until the end. Next, in terms of complexity, it's going to get a 4 because there are many steps that require the team to pay attention to and stay on top of. While not being insanely fast-paced and aggressive, there are many things to keep in mind when both laying down the pipeline and defending during the refining process. Finally, for the enjoyment rating, I'm going to give it a 4 as well. These mission types have a lot of involvement, and to me, that makes things more entertaining. But I know some people really don't like the long setup process at the beginning of these missions. Either way, I still put it as one of the more entertaining mission types in the game. Well, that about wraps up everything you need to know about going through an on-site refining mission, and hopefully now you have a better understanding of what goes into them. So what do you guys think? Did I miss any details? And do you agree with my judgment of how fun it is? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next Friday for another video.